all these characters are so good except James. I really don't care about James. I'm really scared for where this book is gonna go. Because I'm literally gonna start crying. Why? I, I can't continue reading. I'm too scared. Okay, I have to go. I have to know what happens. Hey y'all, my name is Merit. Welcome to her. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about Chain of Iron, the second book in the Last Hours trilogy by Cassandra Clare. So if you have not heard of the Last Hours trilogy, this essentially follows the events of the Infernal Devices, which is the prequel series to the Mortal Instruments. So if you're new to the Shadowhunters Chronicles, I don't really know why you're clicking on this video. Hello if you are here. But I cannot explain to you every single way that these books are connected to each other. There's 20 something books in the Shadowhunter Chronicles and it's just a lot. Basically, all you need to know about Chain of Gold, which is the first book in this trilogy, is that it follows the children of the main characters in The Infernal Devices, which is the prequel series to The Mortal Instruments, where it follows a young woman named Tessa who is kidnapped when she is visiting her brother and she is forced to shapeshift and then she enters the world of the Shadow Hunters. So I don't even want to tell you guys what Chain of Gold is about beyond the fact that it follows children of characters in The Infernal Devices because spoilers for that series. Now that we're talking about spoilers, it's a good time to mention that this reading vlog will be completely filled with spoilers. So if you're interested in reading Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron, do not watch this video. Click off, come back later because I am about to get to all the nitty gritty details of what happens in Chain of Iron because oh my god there's so many things in this book that I just needed to talk about. So what you're going to see now is all of my reactions as I read this book and at the very end of this video I will do more of a discussion which will still be filled with spoilers so please again don't watch this video if you don't want to be spoiled but yeah I'm excited so let's just roll the clips of me reacting to reading Chain of Iron. Hi I am officially one chapter into Chain of Iron and oh my gosh you guys I love this book so much that I'm literally already highlighting stuff tabbing the heck out of this book literally I've read 30 pages but I gotta be honest most of my tabs are probably just going to be me simping for Matthew Fairchild I love him so much he's hands down the best character in this entire series and I just love his dialogue and his moments with Cordelia oh my gosh I literally screamed over this one part where Cordelia literally is just talking to Matthew and she goes to say goodbye and then she accidentally kisses him. Well, she doesn't really kiss him. They like brush their lips together because she meant to kiss him on the cheek and then she accidentally kissed him on the lips. My soul left my body during that part because I want Matthew and Cordelia to be together so bad. I don't care about Cordelia and James. Okay, let me make that clear here. James doesn't love Cordelia. So why is she simping so bad for him? Like, get you a man who is going to love you and treat you right like Matthew Fairchild. I want them together so bad. And also, there was also a super cute moment with Lucy and Anna that I just loved. The characters in this book are just so good, y'all. So incredibly good. And I am just really excited to read the rest of this book. I definitely think that it's going to be five stars considering how much I'm loving it. And I'm only 30 pages in. There's nothing like reading a new Shadowhunter book for the very first time. Guys, I'm literally gonna cry right now and I'm on page 46. This book might break me. I love Cordelia and Lucy's relationship so much. It's currently the night before James and Cordelia's wedding and Cordelia is talking to Lucy and Lucy's basically like, oh my gosh, tomorrow we're gonna be sisters. And Cordelia says, oh, only for a year. But then Lucy said, no, we'll always be sisters. And that was such a wholesome and cute moment and I'm gonna go cry now. I'm going to try not to vlog for every chapter, but I just to talk about Jesse and Lucy. I love them so much. They are just so cute. I love all their interactions and how much you can tell that they care about each other and their banter. Oh, all the characters in this book are seriously immaculate. I would say I can't pick favorites but I am obsessed with Matthew Fairchild so we know that's not true but all these characters are so good except James. I really don't care about James. I am officially to page 104. I just got to chapter five. I think I know why it's called Chain of Iron. It's because Grace, you actually get Grace's perspective in this book, which I think is really interesting because we don't like Grace Blackthorn. We don't like her. But 
I think that she's definitely an interesting perspective to get because I want to see why she manipulates James. It says, for years she'd lived with the knowledge of James' love like a weight on her shoulders. She thought of it as chains, iron chains that bound him to her. So this is very clearly going to be a book about Grace, at least I think so, because the book would be called Chain of Iron. So that just makes sense to me. So I am excited to, sorry, this angle's bad. I am excited to learn more about her reasoning but do i like her no what just happened so cordelia and james just had their wedding and i felt nothing i really just want cordelia to run away from james and to get with matthew instead but matthew would never do that to james because they're bros but also like matthew and cordelia just make sense to me and i need it to happen okay so what just happened is the night of Cordelia and James's wedding. So basically Cordelia is telling James, she's like, oh, I need you to take my dress off because I don't want the maid to know that this is a fake marriage because why would I have my dress on if we're actually married? And I hate Cassandra Clare sometimes because I was adamantly, adamantly not team James, but he showed Cordelia the house that they have together now and how he picked all these little details out for her specifically. And I just know that this book is going to tear me up because I am so conflicted right now. I don't want to like James in terms of him ending up with Cordelia. I think I can get with James as a character, but knowing that he had feelings for Grace and that he still pines for Grace, whether that is due to manipulation or not, I just can't trust him to be in a relationship with Cordelia because we need to protect Cordelia at all costs. And Matthew deserves a love. He deserves to be loved by someone as wonderful as Cordelia. And Cordelia deserves to be loved by someone as amazing as Matthew. So I really, really, really want them to be endgame. But right now I'm kind of like, okay, like I can see Cordelia and James ending up and I think I might be okay with it. And I just don't know how to process that information. She's really gonna rip my heart out and pull a clockwork prince on me. And I, I just can't take it. I can't do it. So I'm officially past page 200 and I'm kind of wondering where the plot is of this book. I'm not complaining because I do like spending time with the characters and there are things happening. So it's not boring, but I'm kind of like, where is this book gonna go at this point? So there have been chapters from London from a mysterious point of view about a killer. So I'm thinking it might be from like a demon's perspective and I don't know what's really going on with that. I'm sure we're gonna learn soon because there have also been murderers just in the city. So I'm definitely intrigued by that, but I'm kind of like Cassandra Clare, you've done this before. So like, why are we using the same plot points over and over again? I kind of wish that the conflict was different, but again, I still don't really know what it is. So maybe it will be, but I just want to talk about how Cassandra Clare has literally made another beautiful love triangle, okay? I know I've bashed on James this entire time, but I can understand his perspective. Grace did manipulate him and he never wanted to be in a relationship with Cordelia, but I do still think Cordelia deserves better. She deserves someone who actually loves her and I don't think that's James, but they're having so many sweet moments. I want them to be like together in a friendship sense, okay? Because James on page 204 tells her, I want you to read me from the beautiful Cordelia. Oh, by the angel, no, James, it's not a real book. Lucy wrote it just to amuse me. That's why I want to hear it, James said, with a disarming straightforwardness. I want to know what she thinks makes you happy, makes you laugh. I want to know more about you, Daisy. And that melted my heart. Like, he genuinely wants to know her, and he genuinely wants to be there for her. And they just have such a pure friendship. Keyword, friendship. I'm still rooting for Matthew to be with her. There was a scene, maybe like 50 pages ago, where they were at this event, and Matthew comes up to record Kalia, and he's like, a girl can have this dance and I screamed because it was everything to me. It was everything. I don't know. They're just, they've had so many cute moments and I don't want to root for them, but now I'm kind of like, well, shoot, I'm going to be in a Will, Jem, and Tessa situation again. Clearly there's a winner, okay? Clearly I was rooting for Will. Clearly I'm rooting for Matthew in this case, but it's actually a really good love triangle and I am just feeling happy that I think that I could see myself being happy with whoever Cordelia ends up with. Of course I want it to be Matthew, but I do think that James is a great guy and if they become this sort of friends to lover situation and I could totally get down with that. So I just wanted to take back my James slander. I still don't love him, but I, I apologize for a little bit of it. And yeah, I'm gonna keep reading cause hopefully I'll find the plot. Oh my gosh, guys, I have a lot to catch up on. I am almost to page 300, so I'm getting close to halfway and there's definitely a plot that is picking up with the murders of different people in the community 
community and I don't like how it kind of feels like a cop-out. I feel like that's again the same thing that happens in every Cassandra Clare novel and I'm just getting kind of tired of it but I am still loving all the characters in this book and I feel so bad for Cordelia right now because her father Elias just passed away. He was murdered. He was one of the murder victims and I just really sympathize with her because she's talking about how she never really got to have a relationship with him. She never got to repair it and now he's gone and she can't do anything about it and it just it made me so sad for her. I was like tearing up at that part. Speaking of how Cordelia is dealing with her father's death, she talks to James about how she's so upset that she can't repair this relationship with him because he's gone now and I want to read like probably my favorite quote from this whole book so far that James says to her. My father used to tell me that sometimes you cannot reconcile with someone else. Sometimes you have to find that reconciliation on your own. Someone who broke your heart is not often the person who can mend it. And that just that hit a little bit too close to home because I feel like I am very forgiving of people and I want to reconcile and just kind of move past things. But I also need to accept that sometimes people really do hurt you and just because you want things to be normal, it doesn't mean that you should forgive them. I mean, not that you shouldn't forgive them, but it just means that sometimes you need to accept that forgiveness and acceptance into your life again is not the right path for you. And I just think that's really important in James talking to Cordelia about losing her father because he did a lot of really bad things and he wasn't the best father to her and I think that she just needs to accept that. I mean obviously it's still a really tough thing to deal with losing her father that she didn't know but she can't beat herself up over not having that relationship with her because it's a two-way street and her father wasn't doing everything that he could to have that relationship with Cordelia. So I loved that line so so much. I also really liked this quote that says when you want something very much you're willing to accept the shadow of that thing even if it is just a shadow. I just this book is beautiful. The writing is beautiful and I feel like so many things are just sticking with me and resonating with me and I want them tattooed all over my body. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, I'm literally gonna start crying. So Matthew has had this secret this whole time. Apparently if you've read Ghost of the Shadow Market you already knew this and I already knew because I like looked up what it was but he basically tells Cordelia that when he was younger he basically poisoned his mother on accident while she was pregnant and so she lost the baby and it's like eating him up inside and it's a reason why he's kind of distant and in this moment Cordelia just stops what she's doing and she hugs him and it's just such a sweet moment. I literally can't and then immediately after Cordelia's like can we go do something and he's just like I would do anything for you my lady like Matthew Fairchild. Matthew Fairchild is everything to me and Cordelia and Matthew need to get together. I'm tired of saying it. I need them together so bad because this is the kind of love that they deserve. They deserve this kind of love of just acceptance and just being there for each other and not having any judgment about things that they've done in their past. This is healthy, not James pining for someone else while he's married to someone who he doesn't love in that way. Cordelia and Matthew, please, I'm begging you, please. Oh my God, literally pages after such a sweet moment with Cordelia and Matthew, Cassandra Clare is giving me another Jesse and Lucy moment. Oh my goodness, basically they're just talking and Jessie says to Lucy, I feel so lucky to see you like this as if I'm your husband. And she's like, what if I just come in to do, to do whatever because you know Lucy can control ghosts and all that stuff. And he just says, I am yours to command. I love them so much. I love them so freaking much. I love all the characters in this book. I've said that like 10 times, but I'm going to say it again. How does she do it? How does she do it? Cassandra Clare? How? I freaking love the parallels in this book. I love the moment where James is, you know, having his nightmare and Matthew comes into the room and James says, Matthew, is that you? I can't. Literally, so much just happened in chapter 18. Matthew and James just had a fight and I have to read this quote to you. I'm sorry this vlog is literally just me <laughs> reading all quotes, but this one's important, okay? Matthew's talking to James. I don't want to see you ruin your life, but if you don't love Cordelia, you should let someone else love her. 
I really think Matthew has feelings for Cordelia. I know it's been hinted at and we know what side I'm on, but I feel like there hasn't been anything concrete on paper yet to show that Matthew cares for Cordelia, but that line right there makes me think something's gonna happen soon. There's gonna be a lot of tension with James and Matthew and hopefully Matthew will get fed up with James being rude to Cordelia and not seeing what's right in front of him and he might divulge his feelings to her or to James. I'm not really sure. I am just really nervous as to what's gonna happen in there because I don't know how Cordelia feels about Matthew. I don't think she knows yet either, but there's been a lot of really tender and sweet moments between them that I just love reading about. Speaking of tender and sweet moments, I need to talk about Jesse and Lucy once again on page 424. If I must fade, I would like to fade remembering this as my last waking dream. Don't go, she whispered. Hold on for me. We're so close. He touched her cheek. Only promise me one thing, he said. If I do go, give us a happy ending, will you? In your book? I don't believe in endings, she said, but he only smiled at her and faded slowly from view. I love them so much. He wanted her to write an ending with them being happy if he faded away. All he wants is for Lucy to be happy even if that means he's not in her life anymore because he physically can't be. I just cannot. Jesse is literally the sweetest person and he's not even a person technically because he's like a half-life. I just want them to be together so bad. I want things to work out for them. I'm really scared for where this book is gonna go because if Matthew and Cordelia don't have a moment together, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> So I just read chapter 23. What the heck? I should have seen this coming. I should have seen this coming. So basically, all these people that have been getting murdered, they have had runes taken from them. And so Lucy has connected some dots together and she's like, oh my god, I think I know where these runes are going. And she goes and checks on Jesse's body because Jesse's body is just being preserved and he has the runes that were taken from these dead people. Oh my god. I mean, it makes total sense that Tatiana is behind all of this, but why am I so shocked? I have to keep reading them. I just, wow, I feel like an idiot right now. I feel so dumb. <laughs> um, what just happened? Jesse is now alive, but actually he's not because it's Belial, or however you say his name, James's grandfather, the demon, possessing him. What? Are you? Are you serious? <laughs> what? This is the most accurate annotation I could have for this book. <laughs> That's Jesse, James said. Jesse Blackthorne. Ah, uh, Lilith's here now? I'm gonna try to update all my thoughts, but this is about to go down, so I might not be able to stop reading. Uh, oh my god, so much is happening and I'm so scared. <laughs> Oh my god, so not only is Lilith here, but Cordelia actually swore her allegiance to Lilith, thinking it was Wayland the Smith, and now Lilith can control her? Why? I, I can't continue reading, I'm too scared. Okay, I've made it to the end of the big battle on page 562. Wow, I legitimately think that this is Cassandra Clare's best book and I'm not being dramatic. The character work, absolutely excellent. The pacing of this, absolutely phenomenal. I was a little bit bored at the beginning of the book, but the battle scenes and just the tension between everyone and the plot twist, I did not see Lilith being Wayland the Smith coming at all. And the fact that the demon literally possessed Jesse Blackthorne's body. Like it was plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. And I'm sure more stuff is coming for me and I'm really scared, but I just need to talk about this. Can we talk about how James, when he sees Cordelia says, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us. Do you understand? Keep hold of me, Daisy. Keep hold of me and don't let go. On the next, Page. He says, Daisy, my love, my love, paired with Daisy. <sighs> I'm trying really hard not to root for James, y'all, but it's getting harder and harder by the second. 
I love both James and Matthew, but I'm getting really concerned that Matthew hasn't professed his undying love to Cordelia yet. So can he get on that, please? Guys, this isn't a drill. Page 638 and 639. Matthew and Cordelia are talking after James does a dumb thing with Miss Grace Blackthorn. And Matthew's like, I was just sort of hoping I'd stop. And Cordelia's like, stop what? And you know what he says? Hoping, I suppose that you would see that I loved you. Okay, I have to go, I have to know what happens. Okay, I just finished and I'm gonna give y'all more of my thoughts when I have had more time to think about it. Also, my ring light glare is so bad on my glasses. I'll take it off, I literally can't see, it's fine. But, oh my God, oh my God. The last page insinuated something along the lines that Jesse Blackthorn is actually helping Tatiana and might actually be against Lucy and I can't take that. I emotionally cannot take that. But we have some good news because Matthew and Cordelia are going to Paris together. Screw you, James, for not realizing what you had in front of you this whole time. I am so excited for this. And obviously I'm giving this book five freaking stars. This was amazing. This is Cassandra Clare's best book and I will stand by it. And I'm gonna go cry over it now. And I'll talk to y'all when I have coherent thoughts about this because right now I am just having whiplash. Okay guys, so now you've seen all my reactions to Chain of Iron. I went through it in this book and I'm going to try not to be repetitive and talk about all the things that I mentioned when I was actually reading the book. So I'm not going to go through quotes or anything once again because I think we had enough of that. But I have a whole list here of things that I really wanted to hit on and touch on. I just need to say that I loved all the references to the Infernal Devices in this book. I I loved it so much. I reread The Infernal Devices in the beginning of this year, so it was really fresh in my mind and just hearing all those lines and references and being back with Will, the love of my life. Oh my gosh, it was so magical. And I love the attention to detail that Cassandra Clare had. That was probably my favorite part of this book. Besides the one and only Matthew Fairchild, Fairstairs writes in this household only, I need Matthew and Cordelia to get together so bad. And by the end of the book, I don't think that she's actually going to end up with Matthew by the end of this series, but the end of the book gave me hope. This book was really Clockwork Prince 2.0 and it tore my heart into a million pieces, but it also made me so happy because now I have a sliver of hope that Matthew and Cordelia can get together, but I know Cassandra Clare isn't gonna do that. I know that Cordelia and James are gonna end up together by the end of this, but some part of me is hoping that Clockwork Princess will be replicated here and I can be happy and things can play out in both directions, but I highly doubt that. So I'm just very sad because I feel like I'm on the wrong side of the love triangle, even though I know I'm correct, Cassandra Clare doesn't know I'm correct. One thing I don't think that I talked about very often during the reading blog portion itself is Grace Blackthorn. I really liked how we got her perspective in this book because I feel like it made me understand her character more. I was not the biggest fan of Grace in Chain of Gold and you know, we're not supposed to be, but I really think that Chain of Iron really made me have a newfound appreciation for her character. I think that she was just so interesting and in seeing how Tatiana manipulates her. And yeah, Grace does do a lot of things out of her own will, but she feels like she has to, to feel accepted by her mom because she's adopted. And so she really wants to make that impression on her and do what she wants her to do. But by the end of the novel, she really came to her own terms and was like, you know what? Screw my mother. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I just loved learning more about her character and her motivations. And it made me sympathize with her more. I still don't love her, but I think that she's just such an interesting and complex character, which are my favorite to read about. So even if I'm not her biggest fan, I'm glad that we got her perspective because it just made me understand her more. One dynamic that I absolutely loved reading about was Matthew and James because Matthew is not afraid to tell James how it is. He's not afraid to say what the heck is up and he will tell James things he doesn't want to hear but that he needs to hear and that is a good friend y'all. Like I just love how honest and open they were with each other and how they always had each other's backs. Even though Matthew was very clearly pining for Cordelia the whole time, he still wanted to do what James wanted. It broke my heart because Matthew is the most like complex character I 
think in this book besides maybe Grace. And I think that he deserves the entire world. He has gone through way too many hard, awful things like poisoning his mother and forcing her to lose her baby. And he didn't even know he was doing that. Like when I read that scene, it broke my heart. I hadn't read the novellas or whatever beforehand, but I actually did know that that was what happened to him. It just felt so special knowing that Matthew told Cordelia that even though James didn't know that that was his deep, dark secret. It just shows how much Matthew cares for Cordelia and wants her in his life. And it was just so special, but I, I don't even know what I was talking about anymore. I think I was talking about how I just love James and Matthew, but I just, this is just a Matthew Fairchild Santa account. I don't know what you want me to say. Matthew just deserves the world and he's the one that has gone through it the most. And I just need him to stop going through terrible things. I need him to get with Cordelia and to have a happy moment because I feel like that is how he would be happy ultimately. I know that he shouldn't place all of his hopes and dreams into love, but I really do think that Cordelia and him have the sweetest dynamic and it's just gonna crush me if they don't end up together in the third book, Chain of Thorns. Another dynamic that I really wanted to talk about was Jesse and Lucy. Oh my goodness. I don't know what happened at the end there in the epilogue where there was sort of a hint that Jesse was actually working with Tatiana, but I don't know if I just read that wrong and I'm stupid, but I cannot believe how sweet Jesse is to Lucy. I love them so much. And the whole scene where he commanded her to kiss him, where she was like, just saying, I don't want to command you. And he was like, you can command me whatever you want to. And I was just like, ah, like I was dying because I love them together so much. You can see how much Lucy cares for Jesse and how much Jesse cares for Lucy. And the fact that Lucy is now missing, what? What are we supposed to do with that? I'm concerned for her. I know that she'll probably get found ultimately and that she's going to be okay. So I'm not too, too scared for her. I'm more upset about the ending of Matthew and Cordelia going off to Paris and not knowing what happens after that. And of course I care about Lucy. She's one of my favorite characters in this book. And I think that she is such an interesting power and just such an interesting personality because she feels this need to be secretive all the time and not actually divulge how she's actually feeling to those around her. And that just has to be a lonely existence. So I really, really do care and sympathize for Lucy and I'm scared for her, but also I feel like Cassandra Clare wouldn't kill Lucy, but if she does, I'm gonna have to have words with her. The ending of that broke me because Lucy giving herself up for Jesse to come back to life. I just can't. I literally just can't. I didn't even talk about Alistair and Thomas. That was so freaking cute. I don't really have a lot of attachment to them because I haven't read Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy, which I believe is the book where they get more screen time and you kind of understand their character more. So I feel like I don't have a lot of background on their dynamic, but I I loved them. I thought it was so sweet how they just really got to know each other and opened up to one another. And I'm excited to see how their relationship progresses. I think I wanna talk about one last thing and then I'll wrap up this video because it's going to be entirely too long. But I just wanna say, from a literary standpoint, I mean, I am not the most concrete book reviewer. I read books for fun. And so I do not have the most high opinions on this, but Cassandra Clare, really stepped up her game with this series. I think that it's very clear that she has grown so much as a writer because she has made me feel all these different feelings. She had beautiful description. It wasn't too flowery though. And I just feel like all these characters are so authentic and real and I just wanna like reach out and hug them. Like I can visualize them so clearly and that's what I love so much about Cassandra Clare books is not only is the world rich, but the characters are rich, but the plot twists in this book kept me so engaged and just scared for all these characters. So I just have to say that objectively, I honestly think that this is Cassandra Clare's best book. And this one might be my favorite Cassandra Clare book ever. I do have to reread The Dark Artifices to really know, but this might be my new favorite Cassandra Clare series because I just love the Infernal Devices and I love Will and Tessa and all these characters and so being with their children oh it's just everything to me I I love it so so much and I'm sure that I could sit here and talk for hours about this book but I'm not going to because I feel like I've tortured y'all enough I've tortured myself enough thinking about all these things that these characters are going through Miss Cassandra Clare owns me and I am just so excited for Chain of Thorns to come out. I need it yesterday. So yeah, that is it for this video today. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you guys thought of Chain of Iron. I need all of your thoughts because this book broke me and I wanna know that I'm not alone. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. I post book related content twice a week and I also have my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Amazon wishlist, all that good stuff linked in the description down there as well. So if you wanna support me on other platforms, I would really appreciate 
appreciate you checking me out there. And yeah, without further ado, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.